If you ever picked around in the Yarmouth Notes workspace, you probably stumbled upon a note called Raycast, and after fiddling around with it a bit, chances are you came to the conclusion that it seems a bit too complex to easily make sense of. But no worries, my plan with this video is to demystify at least the core features of what I think is one of the most powerful and versatile notes available right now. Before I get into how raycasting works, let's create some geometry we can use to demonstrate. Add a plane that we can apply the Geonauts modifier to. Also, add a monkey head and position it below the plane. This will be the object that we use to cast rays on. In the Geometry Nodes workspace, select the plane and press New. Then drag the monkey from the scene overview into the Geonauts tree and set the object info node to relative. Delete the group input and instead add a grid. Set the size to 3 in both X and Y, and set both vertices X and Y to something like 100. Then add an instance on points node, and connect it to the group output. Then connect the grid node to the instance on points node. Next, add a cube from the mesh primitives, and connect it to the instance input of the instance on points node. Of course, the cubes are way too big, so set the size to something like 0.015. With the geometry in place, let's add the Raycast node. Before we do anything with it, let's go over what some of these inputs and outputs actually mean. Ray length just tells the node the max distance that rays are allowed to travel, so anything further away than this value will not be detected by the raycasting. Ray direction tells the node in what direction to cast the rays, and this vector is in local space, which means that it is dependent on the rotation of the object that is casting the rays. In our case, since we haven't rotated the plane, Negative 1 on the z-axis is the same as negative 1 on the global z-axis, so the rays will be cast straight down towards the monkey. You might have noticed that while the raycast node has a geometry input, it doesn't have a geometry output. Instead, the outputs of the raycast node has to do with information that can be extracted from the point that the ray actually hit. To illustrate, connect the object info node to the geometry socket of the raycast node. Then add a set position node after the instance on points node. If we connect the hit position from the raycast node to the position of the set position node, you will notice that all the cubes are now scattered on the surface of the monkey. If we then connect the is hit from the raycast node to the selection of the set position node, it's immediately more apparent what's going on. In essence, rays are being cast from the geometry created in the Geonode system straight down, and wherever a ray hit is detected, we then use the position of that hit to set the position of that geometry. But then using the isHit information, which is a boolean that returns true if a hit is detected and otherwise false, we can create a mask that determines what parts of the geometry that should be affected. Hit normals gives us the normal vector of the face that the ray has hit, and hit distance, which we will use in a moment, gives us the distance that the ray traveled before hitting something. So let's say that instead of placing the cubes on the surface of the monkey, we instead want to displace them upwards to create a sort of imprint effect. This is where hit distance comes in handy. Add a math node set to multiply, another math node set to subtract, a map range node, a combined XYZ node, and a separate XYZ node. Connect the hit distance to the multiply node and set the value to negative 1. Then connect the multiply node to the top socket of the subtract node. Connect the location of the object info node to the separate XYZ node, and then connect the C output to the bottom socket of the subtract node. Then connect the subtract node to the C input of the combined XYZ node, and finally connect that node to the offset input of the set position node. To make sure that no cube goes below zero on the C axis, Plug the map range node between the subtract node and the combined XYZ node. Set both from max and to max to some larger value like 10. At this point, to get the more pin-like effect, you can change the C size of the cube. To further demonstrate the power of raycasting, let's also create this scanner effect. Disable the collection and create a new collection, and rename it to Instance Objects. 
In this collection, add a monkey and rename it to head base. Then duplicate it and rename the new copy to head wire. With the head wire object selected, go to the modifiers tab and add a subdivision surface modifier set to simple. And set the number of subdivisions to 2. Then add a wireframe modifier. After that, disable the instance object collection and create a new collection. In this new collection, add a plane. And then add an empty. With the plane selected, go to the geometry nodes workspace and press new. Then drag the empty into the U nodes instance and set the object info node to relative. Like before, delete the group input and instead add a grid. And set the size X and Y to 0.75. Next, add a transform node and connect both location, rotation and scale from the object info node to the corresponding sockets of the transform node. And then connect the grid node to it. If we connect the transform node to the group output, we can now change both position, scale and rotation of the grid by using this empty. Make two duplicates of the object info node and swap the empty object with the two monkeys. Add a yarn geometry node and connect the transform node to it along with the monkeys. Add a separate geometry node and place it between the object info node containing the headwire object and the yarn geometry node. Finally, add a raycast node with its ray direction set to 0, 0, 1 and connect the transform node to the geometry input. As you might have guessed, all we need to do now is connect the is hit output to the selection input of the separate geometry node to get the desired effect. The way it works is that the monkey geometries are casting rays straight up in the scene. And when a ray hits whatever object we have set as a target geometry, in this case the grid, it will register that ray as a hit. We then use that hit information to create a mask with the separate geometry node. And that is what these two selection and inverted outputs are useful for. If we instead connected the inverted output to the yarn geometry node, we would get the geometry whose rays did not register a hit. To make the wireframe look more like a scanner, enable the instance collection, and with the head wire object selected, go to the materials tab and create a new material. Scroll down to the emission section and set the emission strength to 15, and select a bright color. To make the effect pop even more in Eevee, go to the Render Properties tab and enable Bloom. The main thing to keep in mind when it comes to a Raycast node is that it doesn't do much on its own. Instead, the point of it is to provide you with information about whatever array has hit. It is then up to you to use that information in a meaningful way. So with that, I hope that this video has given you some insight into how the Raycast node works, at least enough that you can start playing around with it yourself.